Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Folge von Rosport TV, heute Nummer 52. Ja, wir wären schon eine Woche weiter, aber die Technik hat mich leider eine Woche zurückgeworfen, deswegen in der letzten Woche keine Folge. Aber wir hatten ja unter anderem das RWC, Ragnarok World Championship, zu bestaunen, fand in Seoul statt und ja, war auch ganz interessant. Es gab einen Livestream, sehr nett gemacht, äh, gibt später ein paar Infos zu. Ja, allgemein Technik, ähm, ich bin da eben mal so ein bisschen misstrauisch, vor allen Dingen diese neuen Cloud-Dinger. Ja, also alles in die Cloud verschieben, fürchterlich. Äh, ich kann euch da was erzählen, ich habe am Wochenende meine neue Konsole bekommen. Frisches Schnäppchen bei Ebay, ja, was ich da erlebt habe. Endlich kann es losgehen, endlich zocken. Ach, dann mal los. Was? Sie müssen die Konsole aktivieren, warten Sie auf die SMS von dem Smartphone. Ja, das ist doch in Ordnung. Ah, da ist sie schon. Ha. So. Herzlich willkommen. Google hat uns darüber informiert, dass Aha. Google hat uns darüber informiert, dass sie ihren Sohn XY bei eBay erworben haben. Sind Sie sicher, dass es sich dabei nicht um eine Raubkopie handelt? Ja. Sind Sie wirklich sicher, dass es sich nicht um eine Raubkopie handelt? Der Telekom Börsenkurs sinkt stündlich um mehrere Dollar aufgrund von Raubkopie. Mhm. Ja. Ha. Vielen Dank für die Bestätigung. Wollen Sie jetzt unser kostenloses App-Paket mit 50 Apps herunterladen, die Ihr Spielvergnügen steigern? Wollt ihr mich verarschen? Nein. Vielen Dank. Unser kostenpflichtiges App-Paket mit 5 Apps wird jetzt installiert. Ja. Fro server wartung am 8. November. Wie bei jeder Wartung wurden die Kaffeeoperationen bearbeitet und die WoE 2 statt geändert. Außerdem wurde das Halloween-Event beendet und durch ein neues Event No Death ersetzt. Der neue Renewal Training Ground wurde aufgespielt und plus 9 Rüstungs- und Waffen-Upgrades können jetzt in Morok benutzt werden. Das Combo zu dem RBC 2012 Memory Knife wurde kurzzeitig deaktiviert. FO No Death Penalty Event. Bis zum 15. November legt sich ein schützender Vorhang über Midgard, der alle Abenteurer vor dem Verlust von Erfahrungspunkten bei Tod schützen wird. Wäre das nicht die perfekte Gelegenheit, ein Risiko einzugehen? Iro führt mietbare Element-Waffen auf Iro Classic ein. Zu den neuen Extended Class Drops, Tech One Boy und ganz länger gibt es nun mietbare Waffen für den Kampf gegen Wasser- und Erdelement Monster. Sprich mit dem speziellen Kafra Element Weapon Rental NPC, um dir die neuen Waffen zu sichern. Die Zufallslotterie kehrt diesen Monat auf Iro zurück. Lucky Raphael bietet euch alle paar Minuten verschiedene Items an. Übergib ihm einen Zeni-Betrag, um dein Gebot abzugeben. Selbst wenn du den aktuellen Hauptgewinn nicht gewinnst, einen Trostpreis erhältst du auf jeden Fall. Wenn du wissen möchtest, was es zu gewinnen gibt, klicke auf das Schild neben Raphael. Alle Infos zu diesem Event findet ihr natürlich auf der Homepage von Iro. Den Link dorthin gibt es bei uns in den Videoinformationen. Ja, ja, hier macht man was mit. Immer diese Technik. <lacht> ja, äh, wesentlich besser und äh, flüssiger und ohne Technikprobleme lief es beim RWC 2012. Ja, das fand in Seoul statt. Und äh, ich fand es ganz nett gemacht. Also ich habe den ähm, ja, englischen Stream geschaut. Ich weiß gar nicht, der wurde dort bei Facebook gepostet. Ähm, ich habe auch von anderen Streams gehört, die dort live gesendet haben. Äh, ja, bei dem war es ganz nett. Ähm, es wurde gesagt, dass die Kommentatoren teilweise ein bisschen ahnungslos waren. Das bin ich auch, deswegen gefiel es mir wahrscheinlich ganz gut. Ähm, und ja, an sich war es ganz nett. Also sie haben doch ein ganz gutes Feeling rübergebracht und äh, ja, Japan hat gewonnen. Da nehme ich jetzt nichts vorweg. Das solltet ihr mittlerweile wissen. Und wir schauen uns doch einfach mal ein paar Bilder vom RWC 2012 an. Äh, ja, das Ganze auf YouTube gibt es sehr viele, ich glaube sogar alle Matches mittlerweile. Und äh, ja, die Links zu den Videos, die ich euch hier zeige, gibt es bei uns in den Videoinformationen und einfach mal RWC 2012 eingeben bei YouTube und ihr werdet alle aktuellen Videos finden. Ja, dann viel Spaß! Yes. yes, the EU going with uh, mechanics, surprisingly enough, and uh, of they course. do not have Dragon Breath on their team, so let's see what they plan to do with the mechanic. Yes, indeed. Uh, and we're playing on the same map as our previous game as well, so we really don't know where it's coming from. As a matter of fact, lots of surprises we've seen in the previous round. 
So let's see. They have the Madagir up in display. They're not trying to hide it or anything. So maybe they plan on using him in the normal skirmish instead of just going all out on a suicide. But actually, it's not such a bad idea to actually pick up the mechanic for this particular round because first off, you have trouble finding your opponent. And second, and the map two. is ridiculously small. Exactly. So uh, basically, you, there, there's not that much room to maneuver out of harm's way if you decide to uh, basically suicide and sacrifice uh, your mechanic. You can yes. do plenty yeah. of damage. It's actually a good tactical choice, especially if you conflict near the bridge. Uh, this might not be a good spot for them to meet the enemy team. It's quite open. It is quite open. So they uh, might uh, want to decide to uh, back off to the tighter areas of the map if they want to uh, get a really easy um, self-destruct. But look at that. Like all round up in the bottleneck. They're going to go in. Europe's going in. Like right now, look at that. Indonesia's act absolutely trapped in that small island. And we see the mechanics staring at them. Oh, they decide to back off. They think, uh, but uh, they've got them in a trap actually right now. All they got to do, if I were Europe, I would just wait and squat this position. Yes, right now there's an extreme vacuum. They cannot pass that because you will get stuck if you walk into it. Indeed. So right now, the Indonesia, uh, Indonesia is defending the, the Yes, narrow bridge. They're defending uh, their position. They've got no other choice. And uh, you decided to, uh, you know, uh, never mind that. We're going somewhere else. Keep your <laughs> keep your tornadoes. We're moving elsewhere. But uh, definitely, this map offering a lot more, uh, you know, yeah, food more for thought basically yes, more in options. terms of strategy. Yeah, you can yeah. see the uh, mechanic using his neutral barrier that reduces damage, especially from ranged attacks. So uh, that actually nullifies Dragon Breath and Gate of Hell. But it doesn't work on land protectors. That's the problem. So it, it doesn't synergize well with the main protective ability. And I think they're screwed. And they, look, they went uh, the other way around trying to flank their Indonesian opponents. And now the skirmish has started. And the mechanic is trying to get... Oh, he's oh, diving. The mechanic there he is goes. there. The mechanic and is there. And I don't think he got too many people with that self-destruct. No, he didn't. Uh, he managed to get a smack in the middle of the Indonesian team. I think but, he went uh, too far back. He did go too far back. It was really unfortunate because uh, really he did manage to get uh, right there in the middle of the Indonesian team. But uh, the damage was uh, minimal, he thankfully for the Indonesians. Yes, and uh, now he will have to uh, play his character normally as a uh, mechanic without the Mado gear. Uh, right, he has, which is he, has a, he has a few skills, uh, especially the whitesmith skills. He can still deal damage, but it's mostly melee. Uh, he's going to have to get in there and smash him in the face with his axe or but whatever. Exactly, because essentially you use the mechanic for that suicide technique, basically. Yes, and now if let's that see. doesn't fly, then... then uh, uh, yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're a notch down. You're half a character. Instead of having a full character, you have half now. Exactly. So now we could say that uh, Indonesia has got the edge uh, a little bit to consider the fact that uh, the EU failed. Uh, with uh, their mechanic but suicide uh, attempt. I'm curious, is the EU down a few players? I think there are just five of them left. I do see five of them uh, at the moment. Uh, I do. Th I think they lost their mechanic. As a matter of fact, they're they're getting like uh, players hacked out left and right. As a matter of fact, Indonesia oh. now cruising uh, for what looks to be a rather easy victory. And I think they just got rid of the archbishop and. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait to see if they got rid of everybody or if there's a uh, member from the EU because you got Dragon Breath going with the explosion which is both massive AoE and you'll re you will get a sure kill if you time them both. And uh, there we go. We oh, are they're sticking with their mechanic. Yes, they're sticking out with their mechanic. So indeed, this is their main two. strategy to run with Perhaps it is their main strategy. As a matter of fact, uh, they still have uh, no Rune Knight. Oh, none that you can see. There's the Shura with the uh, large battle horns. And... Uh, Okay, the um, the sorcerer and the royal guard leading, and of course there's the extreme vacuum blocking the way. They will obviously choose not to go there. Um, both sorcerers uh, keeping the uh, small bridge of plants blocked. I guess either one of them is going to have to like stop casting that. At some point, yes, indeed. Oh, but uh, oh, yes, who will uh, make to for that bridge? Uh, it really, really looks tight in there. It's a bottleneck and. Uh, I would have to say whoever dares to cross if the other team's waiting right behind Wait, I them. think Indonesia also has a mechanic. Do they? Indonesia... Oh. I don't see one. No, I think uh, they just uh, kept with the original lineup they had in uh, set number one. Indonesia bringing it pretty cautious, but then again, you know, they are leading one set. They're one set up, basically, so yeah, they so really don't they have, have to they rush have it. They here. Exactly. And I uh, see the look on the players, and still no clash. I suppose the um, EU is being more careful than usual. And uh, yeah, I do believe Indonesia has their own mechanic right now. 
It's in the lower right. Oh, exactly. Yeah, they do, as a matter of fact. So they're, 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 they're matching the EU in strats. They are matching the EU. That's a pretty interesting approach. And as the EU well. here is coming up behind Indonesia. We're not sure if they're actually aware that they are here. Find their opponents, it's but no, it's just an image. Yes, and there we oh, go. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're not sure if they're seen yet. Yeah, the EU completely fooling their opponents away right now. They haven't seen oh, them Oh, no, coming. they got the extreme vacuum. They in did the way. get the extreme vacuum uh, at the last second. As a matter of fact, at first I thought they hadn't yeah, seen Yeah, because their backs were turned, so it was almost a good surprise attack similar to the first game, but now the EU is backing off. Um. Yes, indeed, because uh, uh, once again, crossing that narrow bridge, uh, not the best tactical option, perhaps. Well, they still decide to do so. They got the land protector on that bridge. Status recoveries from the Archbishop, taking out some status effects. And uh, they decide to back off yet again. Not a good time to attack. And exactly. a pretty wise choice for the EU team. No, no, at first they, I really thought they would manage uh, to uh, succeed in their sneak attack from behind. But uh, Indonesian players just figuring out what was going to happen. And, and it was a pretty quick um, reaction from exactly. their sorcerer. Exactly, yeah, the whirlpool was very, very quick to come. Quite crucial, otherwise they would have been literally stabbed from the back. And uh, now the EU and like you can <laughs> see them laughing. actually <laughs> laughing about well, it. Well, um, you know, that's the best part. They're having fun. No, they're having fun. Actually, no, this is, I really enjoy personally this map as well. More of a chess uh, a game type. Yes, uh, so rather than the wide open map. Exactly. Uh, better than just a simple square. It does uh, involve more tactics and a uh, lot and more options. We got well. some arrow showers coming in from the Minstrel. Usually they use status bows to uh, inflict status effects with that. No, not, not a whole lot of damage, but uh, you know, it messes you up sometimes. Exactly. So right now, just uh, they're still feeling one another up, basically. Nobody dares crossing that bridge, uh, covering themselves up and buffing themselves up with the land protector. And we're not sure yet on uh, how long is remaining, probably a few, more, a few, uh, few minutes left on this match. Uh, we'd like to remind you that if none of them die, it's going to be a tie. It is going to be a tie indeed. So uh, Indonesia giving EU the proper respect. At least, if not, they're at least having fun with their own mechanic. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But then again, like yeah, Indonesians are definitely playing uh, uh, the smart way here. They're leading. They're up one set, so basically, this is uh, this is uh, the EU's game to lose, as a matter of fact. Yes, so they're just waiting for them, and uh, here is here it goes. There yes, we go. we're gonna have a face off right now. Apparently, there you go. The EU blocking off the uh, extreme uh, vacuum with their oh, land protector, and the we have mechanic going for it. And I think the mechanic going for it from the EU, he's gonna explode. No, he was. No, I believe the Indonesian mechanic already self destructed. Him. Yes, he did, but the EU uh, mechanic right under basically, uh, smack in the middle of the uh, Indonesian team, but who had, had not detonated yet. I think the EU team got. There you go, the explosion. You couldn't see it uh, from below, but you definitely heard it. Now, let's see, the, this is the Shura from the EU team. I'm not sure where the rest of his team is or if he's alone. Uh, apparently, he's like the last guy standing, uh, so it seems. His teammates were absolutely slaughtered <laughs> down there. Uh, the Indonesian team still relatively untouched, as a matter of fact. And I believe that the uh, Extremity Fist, Gillespie yes. Fist, some chances. I yes, the EU, uh, it, the EU showed that they, they knew what they were doing. They were thinking, uh, they adapted to the map. Is uh, a lot of pressure on the Korean side now because they have to win this set or they will be out of this tournament. So let's go to set number two of match number three. This is the Ragnarok World Championships 2012. Philippines and Korea. Let's go to the game. Korea's a little scattered, and I, I'm a little bit surprised with this. Unable to use their land protector. They're backing off completely, whereas the Philippines uh, still able to stay together. It looks like a four-on-four four battle, right? No, make that a five-on-four battle, five battle right now in favor of the Philippines. Another big dragon's breath from the Philippines side. Double that triple, and it looks like this might be over. Let's see. As soon as the Royal Guard from Team Korea is down, you can expect all the other members also to uh, just simply uh, be knocked off the, uh, the screen. It's going to be it as Korea goes on to take the second set after uh, appearing to be behind for a good portion of that uh, second set, but somehow they come back, pull it off uh, the Philippines in desperation, uh, fleeing much of that second set, and uh, they dragged it on for a bit, but in the end, we are even at one set apiece, and we are going to have to go to a third and deciding set to see who is going to win this third match between Korea and the Philippines. Standing by... Uh, waiting for that cooldown, I, I can only assume. Oh, Japanese Here comes team Japan. is charging in, and I don't know if Thailand is ready for this assault. 
And here they come northward on the map. Uh, Thailand is going to be just ahead of them here. They put a vacuum in front of their land protector to ensure that uh, the opposite team will not be able to charge in just like that. They are backing off. Uh, they're not moving as fast as I think they should be. Um, and uh, Japan. Rune Knight with a huge dragon breath there for Japan. Yeah, Jap another big one. Japan got off the first hit and they are getting way more dragon breaths than Thailand. Oh, and an overlap, land protector overlap, and the storm gust, I believe, got most of Japan frozen. That caught them off guard, but the Thailand team got frozen as well. They have to get out of that quickly, the uh, Thailand team withdrawing. And Japan, oh, th there's a member from the Thailand team at the bottom, uh, in the middle of the Japanese team members. He got frozen over there. It is an all-out offensive battle here. Both sides not uh, backing down at all. And a couple of big uh, dragon breaths from the Thai Rune Knight. And, and look at this. Thailand starting to uh, take control as they push forward. Japan on their heels. Down to five players. And we got backing a, off. Guillotine Fist there as well. Japan down to four. I think. I'm not sure if the Guillotine Fist got anyone. Uh, but Japan's not standing on the land protector. They are backing up completely on their heels right now. Both teams uh, still with the Royal Guard. And uh, for a moment there, we saw the uh, Archbishop fall asleep due to probably the Sorcerer ability. And uh, Japan down to still down to four. I, I think Thailand lost like a couple of members also. Uh, I'm not seeing Dragon Breath as much. They might have lost their Rune Knight. And yeah, I do believe the Rune Knight is gone from the Thailand team. Uh, that slows their offense down significantly. But it still seems like they have the numbers advantage. Uh... Japan down to just a couple of players now. One player left for Japan. The Thailand Royal Guard. Is on their way to victory, and they have taken the first set. What a battle that was. And you can see they are so happy for their very first win against Japan. And no more. There it is, uh, Japan with six players oh, remaining. Now, now you see them doing high fives. <laughs> it's all of a sudden. And apparently that's how they're thinking right now. They still have their mechanic going. And uh, they're probably going the exact same route as they did last time. And uh, maybe, Th maybe Thailand is probably still in the same place as last time. We're not sure if they're changing anything up. Let's see. Here we go here. Uh, set number four. Japan leading two sets to one. As uh, they try to buffer up. Thailand doing the same as neither side wants to be over aggressive. Oh, they are using their mechanic also. They took out the rune knight. They are mirroring... Japan set up. No, not exactly. They still have their Shadow Chaser. So they dropped the Rune Knight. They dropped the uh, Warlock. They are now using Mechanic Shadow Chaser while uh, Japan is using Mechanic and Warlock. I believe. Okay, it's going to be an interesting battle. Fight fire with fire, they always say. As we see some uh, Gate of Hell on the bridge there. Uh, let's see what they're going to do. Who is going to be able to execute this better? That is the important question. So um, I'm not sure if Thailand actually has a proper strata practice with their mechanic. I hope they do. You know, you don't normally don't pull a iris thing at such a crucial moment. Uh, with the, uh, I think they have a good chance. They have the Shura. They have the Shadow Chaser. They have two chances to freeze the opponents in place. So if they get that done properly, they can go in for the, for the self-destruct. Now Japan has crossed over the bridge, so they are on the same side now. We could have an engagement very soon as they move northward. And uh, let's take a look as they push forward. No one there just yet. Has Thailand moved away? It seems like it, but there's some effects on the top. Maybe Thailand um, decided to go all the way across the bridge. We'll have to wait to see. Oh, they're still in the same spot. Uh, they are defending it as usual with the uh, vacuum. Uh, probably not a good idea for them right now. And the mechanic is uh, using the uh, cold ability, hopefully to get some freeze. And it's there going goes the mechanic. And it did the suicide, but I'm not sure if he got any. Do you see the Royal Guard? Is the Royal Guard of Japan still alive? I don't know if I saw the Royal Guard, but uh, regardless, Thailand is fleeing now. They've split up into uh, individuals, and uh, they are on the run. Let's see if we can uh, see what they have left and was Four the members. worth it. Oh, pro doesn't look like it, but they definitely got the Royal Guard. I don't see from, the Royal Guard. Yeah, I think they got the Royal Guard from Japan, but they still have five members standing. Uh, Thailand down to four. They have their Shura. They have their 
mechanic not so good in his current state. No royal guard for they, Thailand. They, they got their um, professor and their archbishop, so they're still somewhat good to go. Uh, I'm not sure what they're going to do with a mechanic without the Mago Gear right now against a team with like one more member than they do. But uh, maybe they can pull something off. Oh, wait, I think there's stock uh, Chaser? Their Chaser might still be alive. We'll have to see. And you see the uh, mechanic now using its buffs, probably going into melee damage mode. Um, hopefully, it'll be able to deal enough damage with the Hellgate to uh, take something out. So five oh, Frozen, four. frozen Mechanic up front. Uh, not sure what got him there, but uh, he seems to be free of it now. Land Protector there by the Sorcerer. This is not a good position for Thailand. This is possibly their last round of this tournament, and they are down one member. Uh, they, they, are, they only have their Shura mostly for their offense and a Whitesmith uh, and a, a mechanic without the gear. Oh, I think they're going to bottleneck flash. here separating the two teams. Uh, Japan. Japan spamming with storm gusts and uh, just not wanting the Thailand team to go through, but they're gonna are they gonna push through anyway? Thailand looks like uh, they want to engage. Japan is holding them off. Oh, frozen Shura tried to dive in. Uh, not good. And let's see. Uh, this could be the beginning of the end. As uh, here comes Japan, another big storm gust misses actually. Thailand, a couple of members frozen. The Shura is not able to do anything. I am not sure if they can get out. The high priest is not moving. Oh, it's what? It's imprisoned. Sorry, the, the priest, uh, the archbishop from Thailand got imprisoned. Cannot help. Now it's moving, doing status recovery. Uh, it seems like Thailand still intact with four members. Not sure how long that's gonna last. Another big storm gust freezing two more members of the Thai team. On the upper oh, left. Priest got frozen again, and there goes the uh, guillotine fist. fist. I believe it took, oh no, still four, still four. Thailand holding on with four members. Japan still with five as they hold the edge. I'm not sure, I, I see three flags. There are three Japanese no, Japan flags. Is down to, no, there, there's four there. Oh wait, I think they took out a Thailand team member, I am not sure which. Uh, most of the Thailand team is now frozen or incapacitated in some manner. I see the mechanic. I'm not sure if the Shura is still alive. If they've lost that, then it's pretty much uh, over, I believe. Oh, okay. Now the Sorcerer is still there. I believe they lost their... Uh, I believe the Thailand team lost their Sorcerer or not. No. Oh, it's still the pet there. There is another uh, guillotine fist in Thailand now down to just two players left. I don't think they have enough offense to um, pull this off unless the other team has actually run out of potions. Gates they, of Hell there from the Shura of Japan. Couple of uh, extreme vacuums now being used. And this could be it before you know it. Japan just needs to win this set. There's another Kyoji Fist misses, however. Uh, yeah, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure if the priest got the safety wall. Yeah, I think I see a safety wall uh, that blocks Kyoji Fist. Uh, I, I just don't think they have the offense unless uh, their sorcerer comes up with something. It looks like it's going to be just a matter of time. Japan is up two sets to one. If they win this, this will be a victory for them. Two players left on the tie side versus four on Japan. Big Hellgate uh, going on on the uh, sorcerer of Thailand. And uh, the Archbishop from Thailand is moving again. For how long, we're not quite sure. Uh, we, got, we got the uh, Vortex going up front. Uh, let's see now. I, I believe the uh, mechanic from uh, Japan is like uh, just beating on the uh, Sorcerer of Thailand. Uh, they're having quite a lot of trouble with most of their offense gone, but I, I do believe the Shura is still there, right? Japan Shura? Japan Shura is still there, yes. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's taking so. Maybe it's the safety walls from the, uh, uh, the Archbishop uh, making her immune to the... Uh, Oh, I think there we go. So turn. down to one player. This is Thailand's last stand. It is four on one. This should be about it. Our last player is frozen. Yeah, pretty durable Archbishop right there. <laughs> <laughs> and is this going to be it? Japan looking for the victory. There is a there we go. There. There's the, the guillotine fist. Wenn ihr weniger auf PvP, sondern mehr auf ja, PvM steht, Player vs. Monster, dann könnt ihr bei einem 
äh, kleinen Event teilnehmen, das Bioma veranstalten wird im Dezember, in den ersten drei Wochen des Dezembers, also gar nicht mehr lang hin. Ja, da geht es um Monster jagen und zwar werden euch äh, dreimal pro Woche Monster bekannt gegeben und ihr sollt die dann jagen und ein ganz bestimmtes Item dieser Monster hundertmal sammeln. Das könnt ihr dann ja, beweisen per Screenshot und dann bekommt ihr Punkte. Und äh, ja, wenn ihr genug Punkte gesammelt habt und am Ende Sieger seid, gibt es auch tolle Preise. Und mehr Infos dazu natürlich auf der Seite der Event Community. Dort wird es veranstaltet www.eventcommunity.org. Ja, schaut rein, finde ich eine sehr gute Idee und bestimmt spannend. Ja, mal sehen, was du dir für Items ausgedacht hast. Ich hoffe, nicht ganz so schlimme. Okay, Yellow Peas müssen es nicht sein, aber vielleicht auch nicht gerade irgendwelche Import p drops Ja, <lacht> schauen wir mal. Ich wünsche allen viel Erfolg und wie gesagt, die Seite ist eingeblendet. Ja, schaut vorbei und im Dezember geht es dann los. Wir sind schon passend zur Jahreszeit gekleidet, ich im Pulli und unser kleiner Gastmoderator mit Mütze. Ja? Denn äh, ja, das braucht man, das ist mittlerweile richtig kalt geworden und passend dazu kommen wir jetzt zum Adventskalender 2012. Ja, der findet nämlich auch immer im Winter statt, ist ja klar. Und äh, wir brauchen noch ein paar Einsendungen, ja, ein paar Beiträge. Äh, Bilder, Videos, ähm, Texte, ja, was euch so einfällt. Und das Ganze könnt ihr mir schicken an admin.ro-spot.de. Könnt ihr natürlich über die verschiedenen foren im offiziellen und im rokats forum einsenden oder per privater Nachricht dort in den Foren. Ja, und dann freue ich mich auf eure Beiträge und ähm, ja, dann hoffe ich mal, dass wir wirklich 24 Türchen zusammenbekommen. Und wie versprochen gibt es von rosport.de natürlich auch noch ein kleines Bonbon obendrauf für die Adventszeit. Aber ja, im Vordergrund stehen natürlich die Community-Beiträge. Das heißt, eure Beiträge, eure Bilder, eure Texte, ja, was ihr alles einschicken möchtet. Ich bin gespannt, ich freue mich drauf. Erste Einsendungen gibt es schon, aber es müssen noch deutlich mehr werden. Also ran an die Stifte und ja, dann sehen wir uns im Dezember. Vielleicht habt ihr auch mal auf rosbot.de vorbeigeschaut. Ich sehe täglich dort ja, viele Besucher. Bald haben wir übrigens auch die 40.000 Besuchergrenze geknackt. Dafür schon mal vorab vielen, vielen Dank, weil ich denke, das wird dieses Jahr passieren. Und es ja, ist ein neuer Meilenstein dieses Jahr. Ne? Facebook-Fans haben wir einige dazu bekommen. Diese Besucherzahl, dann sind wir schon bei Folge 52 heute. Ja, es tut sich einiges um rosbot.de, rosbot.tv. Vielen Dank dafür und äh, ja, unterstützt mich weiter so. Und wenn ihr Kritik habt, immer auch her damit. Ja, aber eigentlich wollte ich natürlich auf die Seite zurückkommen. Wenn ihr die besucht habt, ist euch hoffentlich der neue Banner aufgefallen. Vielen Dank an Abby für diesen neuen Banner. Und äh, ja, der wird auch bald bei Facebook mit erscheinen. Wir wollen ja synchron bleiben. Ne? Und äh, ja, ist ähm, passend zur Jahreszeit. Schöner Nachthimmel, kalt draußen mit Lagerfeuer. Ja, stimmungsvoll, finde ich. Ja, könnt mir eure Comments dazu geben. Entweder hier unter dem Video direkt oder äh, per Mail, per... Forum, ja, wie ihr möchtet, freue mich drauf. Ja, angesprochen hatte ich es gerade auch schon. Kritik könnt ihr natürlich jederzeit senden, freue ich mich drauf. Ich bin äh, da völlig, ja, kritikfähig. <lacht> Wenn es äh, positive Kritik ist, negative wird natürlich sofort abgelehnt. Hm? Nein, Quatsch. Schickt mir, was ihr loswerden möchtet, entweder per Mail, per Feedback-Formular über YouTube und ja, die ganzen Wege gibt es alle, sind eingeblendet und ja, dann ähm, hoffe ich auf eure Rückmeldungen. Auch wenn ihr irgendwelche Beiträge mal wiedersehen möchtet, wenn ihr selbst teilnehmen möchtet, was euch so einfällt. Es gibt so viele Möglichkeiten und ähm, ja, schauen wir mal, was dann so von euch ja, von eurer Seite kommt. Hoffentlich auch noch ganz viele Beiträge für den Adventskalender, wie gesagt, damit wir da wirklich unsere 24 Türchen voll bekommen und vielleicht noch ein paar extra Beiträge. Ja, ein bisschen mehr kann nie schaden. Okay, das soll es für diese Woche schon wieder gewesen sein. Ein bisschen kürzer, dafür hatten wir die RWC-Videos. Ich hoffe, euch hat die Folge trotzdem Spaß gemacht. Wir sehen uns zur nächsten, zur 53. Folge dann wieder. Ja, vielleicht mit euren Vorschlägen. Was möchtet ihr gerne sehen? Was äh, sollen wir machen? Bei Facebook haben wir mal angefangen mit ein paar iShop-Preisen. Ähm, ja, und das Ergebnis war überwältigend. Äh, 100% haben gesagt, mehr davon wird es geben, definitiv. Also, wenn ihr noch kein Facebook-Fan seid, werdet es, spielt mit und ja, gewinnt tolle Preise, wenn der iShop wieder funktioniert. So. Das war's. Jetzt will ich euch nicht länger langweilen. Ich wünsche euch eine tolle Woche und wir sehen uns nächste Woche. Bis dahin. Ciao.